What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here. And as always, I'm going to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, last night, um, I do a lot of thinking. Um, lots of thinking, and my mind is always running and racing. A lot of times I'll wake up in the middle of the night, sometimes in a cold sweat, thinking about the Dallas Cowboys and things. And um, I'm trying to remember who somebody had said to me that the swing, the swing in the Dallas Cowboys losing against the Green Bay Packers basically made $1 billion for gambling sites because nobody, and I mean nobody, thought that the Cowboys would lose to the Green Bay Packers. All the money was on the Cowboys. I mean, I know with my uh, BUSR account, I put $200 on it and lost that. And I bet you put money on that as well. That's a lot of money for one game. Now, I'm not going to say that the fix is in or anything like that. Um, I just want to talk about the business end here because we as Joe the Fan keep talking about how we can't pay this guy or this guy's overpaid and everything else. We're talking about money that we can't even fathom. I want to actually go through because we, we're right now we're, we're talking about, you know, if the Cowboys pay Dak Prescott, you know, again, or the reason the Cowboys can't win is because of Dak Prescott. I want you to understand the money situation and projections. Here's what's interesting. Believe it or not, you and me going to games – that's peanut money for the NFL. It really is. Teams make, on average, about $10 million from stadium revenue per game. So that's only $180 million. That's it. That's it, $180 million. Now, here's where it's really interesting is the NFL actually gets paid, or early projections, and it's all basically a percentage. They don't have to do anything other than have a product on the field to get paid for gambling. It's basically their dig. They've got early projections for last year was $2.3 billion right there. So if you take the money that they make actually for fans in the stands and you know the whole stadium and all that, that's about half of what they get just from gambling. And you're seeing now the advent of more streaming platforms. You know, we hated seeing games on Paramount, but guess what? You know, that's more money for the NFL. They don't care if you don't have the streaming rights on that. They, you, you, you want their product. You know, they hold all the keys. You go out and you find somebody who's got Paramount TV or you end up getting a subscription. And look to see that even further. Here's where it's interesting. As we deal with the salary cap that was, what, two point, uh, $230 million this past year. I want you to understand that the NFL commissioner, Roger Goodell, by 2027, has targeted $25 billion in annual revenue. This past year, it was seven, or excuse, 17. So we're talking about another $8 billion in growth. If the, cow, excuse me, if the NFL reaches that $25 billion in revenue stream, that $25 billion, you want to do some math and some numbers, it's actually kind of mind staggering because if you take 25 billion, divide by 32, that's how many teams there are, the players cut the amount that actually goes to the salary cap for each of those teams by 2027 is $375 million. Let me say that again. That's $375 million for each team to spend on the cap. That's about $140 million in the next three years of salary cap growth. With that kind of growth, as we're sitting here talking about you know, the, the contracts and so forth, and understand if we take, for example, the highest contract that's out there, which is Joe Burrow's. Joe Burrow... Even though it's $55 million, let me pull it up real quick before I get ready to get out of here. Um, 
here's the thing about the salary cap, and a lot of people don't seem to understand, is Joe Burrow signed a $275 million contract that pays an average of $55 million a year. His cap hit for this past year was $19 million. His cap number in 2024 is $29 million. His cap hit is $46 million in 2025. In 2026, it's $48 million. And in 2027, where there's no more guaranteed money, it's $52 million. Not a single year until 2029 does it approach being $55 million. Unless they do like the Cowboys do on a regular basis, which is restructure contracts. The problem for the Cowboys were, as it always is, is they wait till the last minute. They waited to, and every time it does, it screws them. It screwed them with Demarcus Lawrence because Demarcus Lawrence said, you want to play around my contract? I'm not getting my labrum surgery taken care of. I'm not getting the surgery done on it. He waited until May to get it done, which meant he could not lift weights all that summer. He played, I think, the first or second game of the season. But as a defensive end, you need full strength of your arm. That was a wasted season for no other reason than the Dallas Cowboys waited and tried to penny pinch and still gave the man what he wanted. You can look at Zeke Elliott. They had the whole offseason to get it together. And instead, you know, Zeke who? Zeke who? They went through this whole mess, ended up him being in Cabo, finally blowing the roof off of a contract that was another one of the worst contracts written out there that literally had him not in shape to start the season. And then Dak, when they had the opportunity to sign him, you know, right after Matt Ryan and Kirk Cousins got their deals in the 20s, no, they didn't do that. I kept screaming, get it done before Russell Wilson gets his deal done. Russell got paid. Aaron got paid. They ended up franchise tagging him and then eventually ended up having to sign the deal that they did now. And because they were desperate, Dak got to put in the no trade clause, the no franchise tag, the no transitional tag, where he literally has them by the balls right now. Now, the reality is we keep getting told that you can't do, you know, all these different moves and things like that. If we're talking about the salary cap um, going, uh, let me pull up the the number because it's not set yet because they have to basically go through and count all the money. Um, The projected... uh, Right now, they're saying the cap will be $242 million. I think that's actually going to be a little bit low, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But we're talking about projections of a salary cap going up another $130 million. If that's correct, then we're talking about for those next three years, dividing that, uh, additional $40 million a year. If that is the case, and if that is true, and of course, we all know how big gambling is. Gambling is now going into all different states and everything else, the different parlays. Hell, you can start betting on cockroaches running up the walls these days. That revenue is untapped potential. The streaming rights, the international games where they're opening up games all over the place. The revenue for the NFL is literally the floodgates are open and it's all just pouring out this concept of Stephen jones that you know you got to be fiscally you know responsible and you can't take chances and spend money dude it's bullshit it's bullshit and this is why you see teams that end up looking like they're in cap hell that are able to go ahead and get out of it they understand how to use the cap They understand how to do contracts. And this is the failing right here with the Dallas Cowboys. Stephen Jones does not know how to do contracts, how to negotiate. Either they lowball you the hell out of it and they end up getting scared 
that they're going to lose you and then they overpay you. And that's not the player's fault. That's the front office of Stephen Jones. They're bullshitting you. And Stephen Jones, if he did not work for his dad, if he lost his job as the Dallas Cowboys, you know, head of player personnel, ain't nobody in the NFL going to hire him. Would you give your um, retirement money for him to manage? That's all I'm saying right there. The talk from Stephen Jones is bullshit. I'm Mark Holmes, and well, I'm headed back home because this weekend, man, you know, I always say time flies when you're having fun. This weekend will be 20 years of marriage to my wonderful wife. Come Sunday, 20 years. And man, it just gets better and better. So we will talk to you guys soon. I'm going to be on the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. And I'll see you back at the man cave. Peace out.